In this video I'm asking, are there too many cards in Warhammer Underworlds? Fans, Robin here with another talking head for you and today I'm asking the question are there too many cards in Warhammer Underworld? Question mark. Because it's a question. Well this is an interesting one and uh, I'm perhaps not best place to answer this. As most of you know Pete and I kind of play this game for fun. We're not, we're not uh, hot, hotly up on the competitive meta um, and it's perhaps this question is asked a little bit in, in troubled times um, as we know this uh, season has been fraught with uh, delivery issues and war kind of stuff because of uh, Covid and so we've got, suddenly got a lot of uh, war bads all turning up on our doorsteps all at the same time a whole load of new cars but just as a, a the background for this is we've got eight new war bands a season and they've thrown in some essential cards and they've thrown in some uh, a new pack of uh, Silent Menace cards which is like 32 new cards and we've got a new starter set just did just for anybody trying to catch up I reckon that we would have had a longer uh, lead time had, had we not been in uh, time of cholera but uh, we you know it, it, for, for me trying to keep up with uh, daily life and, and make videos and, and write stuff it's just boom it's too much but it, it's not just too much from, from that perspective, I don't think. I mean, I think it's a shame people aren't being able to play the games to fully utilise these cards, um, you know, week in, week out. There's lots of, lots of lots of online gaming going on, but it's not the same. Um, but I just wonder whether actually there are too many cards, because I have found now, over the four seasons, um, I have found my peak enjoyment is roughly when there are about four warbands out. Um, of a season, maybe six. Not so much the warbands, because the warbands I think bring something, but when there are four sets of um, universal cards, when you start to get more, it's interesting, because you'd think having more cards would give you more variety. But I think, I've always felt like by the end of the season, it's everything becomes very, very samey. Uh, the decision-making processes within the game became become less interesting. I think definitely the Essentials pack uh, has obliterated some interesting decisions you had to make about what cars to play and then how, to, how best to employ them because the, uh, the, the new um, Essentials pack kind of, you know, it's the great strength versus savage strength issue. Great strength is just generally straight up better I think and you probably always take that because it's no downside. Depends on what sort of warband you're using. If you've only got one shield it doesn't make much difference you probably take savage strength. But you know, there are a few cars like that. Why take Hungering Advance when you could just take Sidestep, um, for example? Yeah, and so, uh, Die Chasm went quite a long way to uh, giving you some interesting interactions, making the cars a bit more nuanced. And uh, this, this Essentials Pack, which I can completely see why they brought it out, but the Essential Pack has kind of squashed that a little bit, particularly if you're playing uh, if you're playing in the current Vanguard meta, uh, which is just the one season of cards. It's, it's very powerful you know, operating in that circle. But that's not really what this video is about, I suppose. Now, but the question is, why is that? Why, why does the game become more stagnant when you have more cards? You think it would be uh, better to, um, you think it would be better. There are more cards, there's more choice, more variety. But I don't think that's true. And I think the reason is, is because we do have good cards and bad cards. And if you imagine um, that the um, good cards are uh, uh, sort of plotted on a graph, good cards and bad cards plotted on a graph, so you've got a uh, number of cards up this side and then how good a card is over this side and the good ones are right over here. So you've got a few rubbish ones and then most of them are roughly the same and then you start to get some um, sort of the, the good cards over here. Now if you've only got a pool of um, say 100 cards and you've got your, your, your fringes, if there, are, if there are only sort of 5%, that's only five cards, five terrible cards, five great cards. But if you've got 500 cards, um, then suddenly you've got 50 good cards and and five and 50 bad cards. So the 50 bad cards you can forget about, but the 50 good cards, or let's say it's not as bad that, it gives you roughly 32, which is the, the, the deck number. If you've got 32 cards, which are roughly considered to be better than all the others, then that's the deck choice done, because they're the 32 best cards. Now, obviously, there's you know, different more bands that utilize different cards in different ways and better. But generally, everybody knows which ones the strongest cards are. And there's probably out of the 32 that are picked, there's probably 
probably a pool of roughly 50. If you look across the tournament decks, there's probably a pool of roughly 50 cards, which those 32 are taken out of for any given any given deck. There's always going to be exceptions, but any given deck. So if you've got the best 50 cards, and you've got you've got if 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 five percent of the cards because Games Workshop can't balance everything. The best win of the world they cannot make even a hundred cards, which are all equally balanced, and they're churning out five hundred a season, maybe more. Um, then and they're just not going to get the balance. And if they end, if they end up with about ten uh, percent are too are too good, that is fifty cards, which are really strong. If they only made a hundred cards and they did 10%, I think 10% is a bit high, uh, but if they did 10% then it'd only get, there'd only be 10 cards, which would mean you'd be choosing most of your cards from the big uh, big hump in the in the bell curve, whereas uh, in the current situation where they've got 500 plus cards, and if you cross two seasons it's a thousand cards, you know, so let's say it's only 5%, so in, in, out, of, out of 500 cards you, you, you've got 25 good cards, you, you cross a thousand is 50 good cards, you're only ever going to pick from this side of the bell curve you're never going to pick from the middle. So what they want to do is get more cards into the middle. And I think by having less cards, then conversely you have a higher percentage of cards that are in the middle. If that makes sense. So that's why I don't think too many cards is great for the game. Um, it's great to see all these exciting cards. And, and you read, I mean, obviously there's great content providers out there and they tell you how great the cards are, how great the cards are. But the, the product, the end of the product is if you've got too many great cards, then, um, then the game becomes less interesting for me. Everybody, you know, every, your mileage may vary, everybody's different, but that's that's for me how I play. I like to have decisions to make, and I want to choose the interesting cards, not the quite obviously better cards. How could Games Workshop solve this? Do they want to solve it? I don't know, because obviously people, it's a competitive game, people want to buy the best stuff, so really strong cards makes them, um, makes people go out and buy them. I... I would like to see less. I don't think there'd be any fact, it'll probably save them money because I think they could still charge the same. So if they just bought out a warband with only its faction cards, because we're not really talking about the faction cards here, the faction cards very rarely are at this end of the bell card, and if they are, they're just unique to that warband, so it's, it's a slightly different situation. If they just put faction cards in, then um, you would get a better game. Now, there's a, obviously a capitalist issue here. If they just put faction cards in and you don't like Headcrackers Mega Mad Mob, you ain't going to buy Headcrackers Mad Mob because there's no need for you to because you're never going to play it. So I completely see why they don't do that. But and I often say that capitalism can ruin a good game because, you know, buying stuff, they want to keep you buying stuff, they want to make money, fair enough, but you, it doesn't make the, the game better because just the addition of new stuff doesn't necessarily equal better. But let's say, let's say they just put 10 universal cards in, that would be better than the current sort of 40 or so that we get. And people might still buy it, because people, mostly people love trying out the different things. I don't know what percentage of people decide they're not going to buy a particular warband because they hate it. I don't think it's that high. But there could be financial issues or time issues, but I don't think, just by desire, I think people like to play different things and see how they interact. I don't think that many people buy stuff just for the uh, cards, but maybe wrong. Let me know if you do, do tend to buy boxes just to get one card out of it. Then let me know. But then what they could do, they could supplement that. They could do extra universal packs. So we've just had a universal pack, which was sort of exciting, but also sort of really frustrating because I didn't think we need one at the moment because we've got this over burgeoning uh, card volume. Uh, but the, the Silent Menace is interesting. It is playable straight out of the box, which is an interesting departure. There haven't been anything like that before. Maybe they could do that. That would be interesting in the tournament scene as well, um, because you could have silent menace tournaments. I'm not sure people would do that because I think it would probably just end up with lots of monogs turning up because they think they're probably one of the best more to utilise. But then you might end up with lots of monogs turning up anyway in the current game because I think monogs are very strong at the moment. But they could do objective-based packs. I don't mean I don't mean I mean objective holding, um, or they could do aggro focus packs and they could do control focus packs and you could buy them and you'd get the cards if you wanted them and then you could run a tour, little tournament scene around that so we're going to play um, Vanguard Control this season or you know, we're going to play Championship Control or whatever so you can only use uh, cards with um, from certain packs you could slim down that card pool, change the meta um, that way you could even uh, even so you, I mean this, this would take some admin I suppose but you could even have decks where you can only take if they, if they categorise cards, you could have like, where you could only take 10 aggro cards, 10 object, whole objective cards, and 10 um, control cards, or, or yeah, maybe, I don't know. The, 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 
I think there, I think there are too many cars, and it just needs a little bit of way of controlling it because you need a way of slimming out what the obvious best cards are, I suppose. And yes, you could put some limits in, which I think becomes a bit of an administrative headache. So I can see why people didn't want to do that. And the easiest way is literally just to slim down the number of cards, because if you, um, as I said, if you have a bell curve and um, you have too big a sample size, then the the extremities of the bell curve are suddenly they're big enough to just make a deck out of. And that really is the crux of this video. But let me know what you think. Do you think there are too many cards in Warhammer Underworlds? Or do you think I'm talking out of my bottom? I may be. It's just my personal preference is, is I've always seemed to have enjoyed the game more when there's less choice. Bizarrely, less choice ends up giving you more choices to make. That's my TLDR. That's the youth say. I say it's the youth, it's just me. I don't know. I've ever heard my kids saying that. But never mind. Well, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see more sort of videos of this type. Hopefully you do. Hopefully I haven't just talked to myself and nobody's watched. Um, and we'll see you soon in the die chasm. There will be physical games arriving very soon. And hopefully that will throw up some exciting opportunities to do more talking heads. Um, but until then, um, enjoy whatever you're playing, whatever you're doing. Stay safe and we'll see you soon um, here at Age of Sigma. Bye!